Over the years, some Android versions have brought massive technical and visual changes, while others have tightened up the screws and added polish without shaking things up too much. The new release of Android for 2017 and beyond, Android 8.0 Oreo, fits somewhere in between these two extremes. Android is pretty stable at this point, so broad sweeping changes are less necessary with every new version. As a result, the new version isn't really about big, obvious new features. Instead, it's the sum of many, many smaller changes which help make it the most mature and powerful version of Android to date. I'm Alex from Android Central, and this is our review of Android 8.0 Oreo. Most of us see Android through the lens of whichever manufacturer's UI we choose, but the design direction of vanilla Android is still relevant. After all, more phone makers than ever are sticking to stock these days. The stock Android UI hasn't changed all that much in Oreo though. If you're only looking for UI changes, you might spot just one, the brighter colour palette for the quick settings area. It's now light grey, not dark grey, reflecting a similar colour change in the stock settings app. Whether that's good or bad is mostly a matter of personal taste. The quick settings panel has been rearranged too, bringing the settings, user switching and edit shortcuts further down, helpfully making these easier to reach on larger phones. The retooled settings app is another big visual change, the slide out hamburger navigation panel added in Nougat has been removed, and instead Google has made navigation simpler by redesigning each of the 13 submenus to make things easier to find. The new battery settings page is a great example of this. Screen on time is now shown right up top, along with the time since your last full charge. Scroll down a little, you'll see your most battery-hungry apps. You need to look below the surface to spot many of the other visual changes in Oreo. For instance, Google has finally started bringing a sense of order to app icons, with new adaptive icons which let you choose between five different cutout types. This means manufacturers like Samsung, Huawei and LG, which like to use their own icon cutout shape, now have a more reliable way to do this that doesn't result in bad, weird-looking icons for third-party apps. Android's animations haven't changed a whole lot in Oreo, but there are a couple of new sprites in the notification shade that add to the polish of Google's material design. Icons smoothly transition from the status bar into their notification cards before springing up into place, and icons now juggle themselves around in the status bar as new alerts arrive, making the whole system feel a bit more dynamic. And these are small changes, but they go a long way towards making this important area of the system feel more lively and fun. Finally, it's worth mentioning a handful of upgrades to that most important of smartphone features, Emoji. Oreo adds a handful of new emoji while redesigning the icons themselves in a move away from the old Android-style blobs. And thanks to a new compatibility layer, developers can support these in apps going all the way back to KitKat. Android notifications were overhauled in Nougat, and Oreo intros a handful of changes to make the daily firehose of alerts a little bit more manageable. The big new thing is notification channels, a new feature which brings categories of notifications to your apps so you can filter different kinds of alerts from the same app. A social app, for instance, might have channels for direct messages, status updates, likes or other interactions. And you can then choose how you're alerted for notifications in each of these categories – sound, vibration, LED, or you can even block notifications from some channels altogether. Now, there is a certain amount of micromanagement involved here, it's going to take time and a lot of individual app updates before we're going to know how successful this feature will be. Maybe notification channels will be genuinely useful for everyone, or perhaps we'll all be too lazy to bother with them. Speaking of laziness, Oreo also lets you snooze individual notification groups temporarily by swiping right and hitting the clock icon. The use case here is pretty obvious, you can now dismiss a notification you don't want to deal with right away without getting rid of it permanently. Elsewhere, media player apps like Google Play Music, YouTube and Spotify can bring a splash of colour to their notifications, drawing upon the main colours of album art. It is a little bit distracting, and not everyone is a fan of this new feature, but it does at least help set media notifications apart from the rest of the clutter. Meanwhile, persistent notifications, for example from Google Maps, a VPN app, or anything else that might be running in the background, are being decluttered. These now shrink down to a shorter notification card in a slightly darker shade, which also helps set them apart visually. And that's important because Android itself now shows you a persistent notification if apps are using power in the background. That's all part of Google tightening the screws on background apps in 8.0, which we'll get to a little bit later. The notification changes don't stop there though. Ambient display, mostly untouched since the days of the good old Nexus 6, finally gets a bit of an overhaul in Oreo. 
The main ambient display area actually shows you less information than it did on Nougat, with only the time and a series of icons appearing when the phone is raised. The other side of that coin is that individual notifications now flash up in a more user-friendly way, which is better for quickly glancing at an incoming message or email. Balancing information density and glanceability is always a tricky proposition, but I think Google's made the right call here. And there's an altogether new way to see your notifications in 8.0. Android now lets launchers show you individual app notifications through the notification badges feature. Apps with a pending notification will display a colored dot, and long pressing to open the app shortcut menu will show you notifications alongside other shortcuts. That's not the only new trick hiding behind the app shortcut menu in Oreo. A new widget shortcut button frees users from long, cumbersome widget menus with an easy way to see just the widgets from a particular app. Picture-in-Picture -picture has been part of Android TV for the past year, but Android 8.0 finally brings it to phones and tablets, introducing a potentially huge feature for owners of extra-large phones and convertibles like the admittedly aging Pixel C. Picture-in-Picture -picture mode varies a little depending on how the developer implements it, but basically this lets you start a video from within one app, then hit the home key to shrink it down to a smaller floating window with its own playback controls. You can resize and move it around the screen in the foreground, while opening and using other apps as normal in the background, and yes, if you're really crazy you can even use multi-window at the same time as picture-in-picture. -picture. It's similar to multi-window, as introduced as standard in Nougat, and while you can still use multi-window to split the screen between a video and another app, Picture in Picture is just a much more elegant approach. It's one of a few new features that should help make Android tablets more appealing to professional users. And there are a few others here. Support for wide gamut colour in apps should make Android a better fit for photographers. While the new A-Audio API will reduce audio latency and bring Android a step closer to taking on GarageBand on the iPad. But let's be clear here, however good Oreo is, Android tablets still have a long way to go before they can challenge Apple's dominance. Everyone hates typing passwords, especially on glass. The tedium of password entry has spawned an entire industry of password managers, but they still require a lot of frustrating copying and pasting. So in Oreo, Google has tackled the password pain point on two fronts. Firstly, Autofill with Google can help you sign into your accounts on your phone using information already stored in your Google account. So if you've signed into Twitter on the web through Chrome, you can then pull in these details to sign into the app on your Android phone. And thanks to the new Autofill APIs, Password managers will be able to serve up passwords to other apps automatically, without any hopping back and forth or copy-pasting between text fields. The one password guys gave us a sneak peek at how this will work a few months back. Again, all of this will require devs to update their apps to target Android 8.0. In any case, both of these address a major pain point of entering complex passwords on a touchscreen. On a related note, Android is also getting smarter about how it handles specific kinds of info in text fields. In the new version, Google's machine learning figures out what kind of data you've selected and offers relevant contextual options. For example, a shortcut to the dialer app for phone numbers, or Google Maps for addresses or place names. There's a lot going on behind the scenes in Android 8.0 too. The main under the hood changes should help in two important areas that everyone can relate to, battery life and faster firmware updates. Firstly, Oreo makes it harder for badly behaving apps to devour your battery by limiting what apps can do when they're not in the foreground. Google uses these restrictions to nudge developers towards Android's job scheduler feature, which handles background tasks in a more efficient way. You can't really see this working, but it's there, and it'll help battery life on every device that runs Oreo. As for OS updates, well, through its new project Treble, Google has created a modular structure that hardware companies can use to separate out their own customizations from the core Android OS. The idea is this will make it easier to push out firmware updates without completely reinventing the wheel every time. With Treble, companies can update Android without re-engineering their own customizations. This isn't a cure-all for Android's update woes, but it should significantly reduce the workload required to update a phone shipping on 8.0 to say Android 9.0 next year. It's going to take time to judge how much of a success Project Treble will be, and the device manufacturers are still going to have to play ball here if it's going to work, but it is a step in the right direction. It's hard to get excited about any single feature in Android 8.0, even if you're a big phone nerd like me. That's partly because Android is more mature these days, and less in need of big sweeping user-facing changes, especially on phones. As a result, Oreo is the sum of many smaller changes that make the OS easier to use, with better performance, fewer pain points, and added convenience. Android still feels like Android, but in 8.0 it's more polished than ever. 
And fortunately, the stable build of Oreo is free from the early wonk that affected the first round of Android 7.0 releases last year. In the grand scheme of things, Project Treble could turn out to be the most significant addition to this version of Android, as Google finally picks away the technical barriers keeping so many phones on older versions of the OS. At the same time, picture-in-picture -picture mode as well as refinements to keyboard navigation see Android shuffling closer to becoming a desktop OS, though there's still a good distance left to travel there. On the surface then, this is a fairly safe release cycle for Android, evolution not revolution, but despite the lack of an exciting headline feature, Oreo is an important update. And for Pixel and Nexus owners lucky enough to be on the early release track, they'll be among the first to experience the most stable and capable Android release in years. That's it for now, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube to see more of the latest Android reviews and opinions as they land.